Ever since Friday evening when President Trump signed the executive order banning Muslim travelers from seven Muslim countries, people collectively lost their minds. Protests quickly amassed at airports where Muslim travelers were being held, not able to leave because of the travel ban. The protests were anti-Trump protests, just as much as they were pro-immigrant rallies in support. If there is one thing that riles up a mob of people, it's a common enemy. And this is the protection of the nation from foreign terrorist entry. The New York Taxi Workers Alliance called on all taxi drivers in the area to avoid JFK Airport in solidarity with Muslim immigrants. Seemingly not aware of the taxi ban on JFK, Uber, the ride-sharing app, decided to lower their surge pricing Saturday evening after the taxi ban, causing the ire of supporters. Social media became livid, spawning the hashtag delete Uber, which saw people delete their Uber accounts for what they saw was a company in support of the travel ban. When people were finished virtue signaling, they turned their business to Lyft, Uber's main competitor. However, Uber said their decision to lower surge pricing came from a good place. Uber has since said that it wasn't trying to come out in support of Trump's executive order, break up the strike, or profit from the situation. We're sorry for any confusion about our earlier tweet. It was not meant to break up any strike, the company told Business Insider. We wanted people to know that they could use Uber to get to and from JFK at normal prices, especially at night. An Uber spokesman also said that the decision to turn off Surge pricing was made specifically to avoid profiting from increased demand during the protest. The company has previously made a similar commitment to limit surge pricing during disasters after being accused of taking advantage of riders in times of need. Did people care about any of this before they decided to delete Uber? Of course not, they didn't give a shit. People were so happy to stand on top of their moral high ground that they did not give Uber the benefit of the doubt. But why did people throw their support behind Lyft? Because on Sunday morning, Lyft announced that they donated $1 million to the ACLU in support of immigrant rights. We may think that Lyft donated a measly million dollars out of the kindness of their hearts, but there's an easier explanation. Lyft and Uber are competitors vying for your service. Henry Giroux explains it as such. We're talking about an ideology marked by the selling off of public goods to private interests the attack on social provisions, the rise of the corporate state organized around privatization, free trade and deregulation, the celebration of self-interest over social needs, the celebration of profit making as the essence of democracy coupled with the utterly reductionist notion that consumption is the only applicable form of citizenship. But even more than that, it upholds the notion that the market serves as a model for structuring all social relations not just the economy, but the governing of all social life. Well, I, I think that at, at the essence of, of neoliberalism is, is, is the notion that, uh, that the essence of democracy is basically about making money. That, that, the, that, that the, uh, the market is a template for all social relations, that anything that doesn't fit into market values it really basically doesn't count. Therefore, when I hear protesters saying, Democracy looks like, show me what democracy looks like, this is what democracy looks like, show me what democracy looks like, Lyft's actions to gain more revenue is exactly the same. The spectacle of inclusion is meant to sucker people into giving Lyft their money instead of Uber. Neoliberalism is sneaky, it feels good, and it ultimately serves the purpose of the private hands instead of the public good. Lyft is sneaky, but I can't blame them. They'll sucker people into giving them their money, and I think they're smart for doing so.